Ceramic and porcelain tiles are two of the most popular floor and wall tiles for residential and commercial construction. However, there is a lot of confusing information out there on the similarities and differences between the two. In this video, we're going to clear up the issue by discussing the composition, quality, price and performance. Tiles have been used as decorative art for centuries. The earliest use of tiles can be found in Egypt, Mesopotamia and China. The word ceramic comes from a Greek word meaning potter's clay. The word porcelain comes from a French word meaning shell or chinaware. Both of these are made of three main ingredients. The first and most important is clay, which is formed from the weathering of igneous rock. Clay minerals have layered crystalline structures. They develop plasticity when wet, but become hard, brittle and non-plastic when dried or heated. This property of clay allows tiles to be formed into different shapes. One type of clay mineral used for tiles is kaolinite. Rocks rich in kaolinite are called kaolin or white clay or china clay. Red kaolinite contains iron oxides. Ball clay is used to improve elasticity and strength. Another type of clay used is talc or hydrated magnesium silicate. The next ingredient is a filler like quartz or silica, alumina or zirconia. These give tiles mechanical strength and shape. The third ingredient is feldspars. Some examples of feldspars are albite, orthoclase and anorthite. Feldspars act as fluxing agents to reduce the melting temperature and fuse all the materials together. The raw ingredients are ground into a fine powder and then mixed in specific proportions by weight. They are mixed with water to form a slurry. This is fed into an atomizer that dries the slurry and forms a fine powder. The powder is poured into a mold and pressed into tiles. It is then dried to reduce the moisture content. Designs and colors are printed on top of the tile and then liquid glass or glaze is sprayed on it. Finally, the tiles are fired in a kiln. So both ceramic and porcelain tiles are made of clay and fired in a kiln but every brand has a slightly different ingredient mix and manufacturing process so it is very difficult to summarize the differences between the two. However, porcelain tile is made of a finer clay and has a higher percentage of kaolinite which makes it stronger. Porcelain tile is also pressed up to 100,000 pounds per square inch, much higher than ceramic tile. Both ceramic and porcelain tiles can be unglazed or glazed. Unglazed tiles tend to be denser, thicker and scratch and slip resistant. Glazed tiles are thinner, more prone to cracking but more stain resistant. They are also better on walls than floors since the glazing is slippery. The Porcelain Enamel Institute or PEI rating determines the hardness of the top glaze and the traffic level that a tile flooring can endure. Ceramic tiles have a rating between 0 and 3. They should be used for light traffic areas like homes. Porcelain tiles have a rating between 3 and 5. They can be used in high traffic areas like restaurants, bars, malls and schools. You can find both floor and wall ceramic and porcelain tiles. Floor tile is made thicker and harder to withstand foot traffic, appliances and furniture. It can also have a texture to reduce the risk of slips. Wall tile tends to be thinner, smoother and more delicate. It's also slippery when wet. Before we continue with the properties of ceramic and porcelain tile, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video. Brad Hedges is an architectural sales consulting company based in Georgia. They help designers specify terrazzo, stair threads, railings, pavers and resin wood laminates for architectural applications. They specialize in high-end commercial and residential projects like this kitchen redesign with large format porcelain slabs. These Antolini Tech countertops are highly durable and resistant to daily wear. Head to bradhedges.com to check out their detailed exquisite work and contact them for your next project. Now let's look at the cross section of these tiles. This Traffic Master ceramic tile that I bought from Home Depot is lighter and less dense. It is made of a red clay with a picture printed on the top surface. When chipped, it reveals the color underneath. This Mirazi porcelain tile is denser and a little heavier. 
It is made of a greyish white clay with a picture printed on the top surface. In the past, porcelain tiles used to be through body tiles. Color ran all the way through, so if the top surface was chipped, it wasn't as noticeable. Nowadays, most floor and wall tiles have a printed picture protected by a thin glaze. If either of these tiles are chipped, you will see the color underneath. Ceramic tile is easier to cut because it is not as dense. I've used both a wet saw and a handheld grinder with a diamond tipped blade to cut them. Porcelain tile can be more difficult to cut because it is denser. One of the clearest differences between ceramic and porcelain tiles is its water absorption rate. Ceramic tiles have a rate of 2% to 20%, while porcelain is almost impervious to water with a low rate of 0.5%. Because of these percentages, ceramic tiles should be used indoors and for residential applications. Porcelain tile can be used outdoors and is better for commercial applications. Now for the cost. Ceramic tiles are generally cheaper than porcelain. This Traffic Master tile is 82 cents per square foot at Home Depot, while this Mirazi tile is $1.89 per square foot at Home Depot. But that doesn't mean that ceramic tile is always inferior. You can find high-end, durable ceramic tiles like Durabody Tile by Interceramic. It has a much higher breaking strength than its competitors and is just as good as some porcelain tile products. It can be used outdoors and is resistant to frost and stains. It also has high resolution prints on the surface that mimic stone and wood. As manufacturing processes continue to improve, it is getting very difficult to tell the difference between ceramic and porcelain tile. Ceramic tile is good enough for homes, you don't really need porcelain floor and wall tiles. Instead of focusing on the type, I'd recommend looking at the quality of the print and the texture of the top surface. The print on this cheaper ceramic tile is very pixelated and not very realistic. Also, installation is very, very important. If you don't use a cleavage membrane like a Schluter system, even expensive porcelain tiles can crack. I made a video on that a while back if you want to check it out later. If installed properly, tiles can last you a very long time. They are inert, non-toxic products that don't contain any harmful chemicals that off-gas. Let me know what you think about these two tiles in the comments below. And if you prefer one over the other, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, notification bell and the like button too. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Thanks for watching. See ya.